his senses and he's powerful, still strong, still يعني, relatively all the quwa is there. So he would seek refuge in Allah. Oh Allah, I seek refuge in you from living to a senile. <laughs> Hey guys, welcome back to our channel. It's your girl Fanny Lungu back with another reaction video. If you're new to this channel, make sure to give this video a thumbs up, share it with your friends, and of course, do not forget to subscribe. If you're new to this channel, like I said, my name is Fanny Lungu, and on this channel, we do reaction videos. And we also have a second YouTube channel called Fanny and Jesse 2.0. You can head there and just check out what we post and enjoy our daily vlogs. And other than those two things, we've got a Patreon, we've got a podcast, you can find us on social media. And for everything that I mentioned, you can find in the description box below, I'm out of breath. And a big shout out to everyone that's been subscribing. Thank you for the 14,000 subscribers. You guys are the best. And I'm just excited. I'm just so excited. I really can't breathe. Thank you for the 14,000 and you guys are the best. Thank you for commenting. Thank you for subscri subscribing. Thank you for interacting with us. Thank you for giving us things to react to each and every day. You guys are the best. And a big shout out to everyone that's here with us today. As you can tell from the sh from the title, this, this protects you in the grave. Powerful. And it was suggested by one of you guys. A big shout out to the person that suggested this. You're the best. Thank you for this. So without wasting time, let's get into the video. By the way, I hope you, by the way, I hope you guys are doing alright. So without wasting time, let's get into the video. It is mentioned in the Muslim Imam Ahmad that when the person enters his qabr, if he is a mu'min, his salah and his siyam surround him. And the angels, meaning of punishment, come. And the salah push them away. And they come from another side and the siyam push it away. And the hadith then goes on. And as for the kafir, nothing can push the angels away. So the hadith goes on, it's a long hadith. What protects from adab al qabr? Salah and siyam, but then we can extrapolate any good deed. Excellent point here. What protects from adab al qabr? Any good deed. It's explicit here. Salah and Siyam stand as protections. Now, Salah and Siyam are the, of the Arkan of Islam. And they include Quran and Dhikr and Dua and Sajda. All types of worship are included in here. So we can say one of the ways to protect from Adab al Qabr is to make sure we have lots of good deeds. This is one of the ways to protect from Adab al Qabr. Just like one of the ways to get into Adab al Qabr is every major sin. Again, it makes complete sense. Complete complementary here, right? Of the ways to protect from Adab al Qabr. And this is really the ways that we should start practicing specifically. Memorizing and reciting frequently Surah al Mulk. Surah al Mulk should be on our agenda, brothers and sisters. Out of all the surahs in the Quran, we should make it a point to memorize some of them even if we don't finish all the Qur'an. And by the way, by the way, all of us should have the niyyah to memorize the whole Qur'an. What's wrong with having the niyyah? Just put it in your heart. Try. What's wrong with that? I will give inshallah lectures about this, but I've known Hufad that became Hufad at the age of 65. And it's possible. One ayah a day, two ayah, they just put it in your heart. Anyway, whatever you memorize, and, and by the way, you should always try to memorize more. Why stop at the five, ten surahs you know? Why? I mean, what's stopping you? Just every day, just concentrate on one small surah, extra day. And one surah that should definitely be on the top of your list is Surat Al-Mulk. And it's only 30 verses, brothers and sisters. 30, that's all. There are so many ahadith that mention the blessings of Surah Mulk. Of them, our Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, an authentic hadith uh, in the Mustadrak of Al-Hakim. Surah Tabarak hiya al-mani'atu min adhab al-qabr. It is explicitly linked. Surah Tabarak is the preventer from adhab al-qabr. End of story. What more incentive do you need, brothers and sisters? If you haven't memorized Surah Mulk, start memorizing it today. Surah Tabarak hiya al-mani'atu min adhab al-qabr. It is the surah that will prevent adhab al-qabr. 
and it's authentic hadith in a number of books including Al-Tabarani and Al-Hakim. And also we have in Sunan Al-Tirmidhi that there is one surah in the Quran that's only 30 verses, our Prophet said, Thalathuna aya. And it made shafa'a in front of Allah until Allah forgave him. It is Surah to Tabarak al biyadihi al-mulk. Very explicit and it is in uh, Tirmidhi. And Ibn Mas'ud said, this is Ibn Mas'ud saying, Ibn Mas'ud said, a person will be brought to his qabr and two men will come to him. And when they come to him, it will be said or a voice will be heard. You have no way to get to this man. He would recite Surat Al-Mulk. Two angels will come, meaning, meaning the angels of punishment will come. And a voice will be said, it will be heard. A voice will say, meaning another voice, an angel will say, Laysa laka alayhi sabil. You have no way to get to this man. He's protected. Because kana yaqumu yaqra'u bi surat al-mulk. He would stand and he would recite surat al-mulk. Then they will try to come from his chest and it will be said to him, go away. Come to his face, it will be said to him, go away. Come from his top, it will be said to him, go away. And Ibn Mas'ud said, فَهِيَ الْمَانِعَةُ تَمْنَعُ مِنْ عَذَابِ الْقَبْرِ he said the same thing as the Prophet ﷺ, but he's explaining it longer. It is the mani'ah. Mani'ah means preventer. It will prevent from adab al qabr. And so this is Ibn Mas'ud saying something, elaborating on Surah Tabarak or Surah Al-Mulk being a protection from adab al qabr. So how does Surah Al-Tabarak prevent from adab al qabr? The one who frequently recites it, the one who memorizes it, the one who loves it, the one who uh, recites it in salah. This is the one who, because this version says, Kana yaqumu, he would stand with Surah Al-Mulk in salah. So not just reading it once or twice, but being frequent in its reading, being of those who are of, and it is also reported, even though some have said the hadith is, Allah knows best if it's weak or not, but one version says he, the Prophet would recite Surah Mulk every single night. There is a narration like this as well. He would recite Surah Mulk every single night. But even if it's not every night, these traditions that mention protecting from Adab al-Qabr, they simply mention frequency of Mulk. So this means Surah Mulk should be on your regular list along with ikhlas and qul huwa allah huwa ahad and falaq al-nas as surah mulk as well even if you split it over two three four rak'at or something or you recite it every few days but it should be in your regular reading list surah mulk as well okay in sahih bukhari and sahih muslim it is narrated that sa'd ibn abi waqas would teach his children this dua the way that the teachers would teach kids alphabet the way that you say Alif Ba Ta Tha, he would teach his children this dua. What dua is this? That he said the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam taught us at after every single salah, we say, say this dua, Allahumma inni a'udhu bika min al-jubni, wa a'udhu bika an uradda ila arda lil-umur, wa a'udhu bika min fitna al-dunya, wa a'udhu bika min a'zaab al-qabr. He would teach his children this dua the way the teachers teach the alphabet to their kids. And he would say to his kids, the Prophet ﷺ taught us to say this after every single salah. Oh Allah, I seek refuge in you from cowardice. I seek refuge in you from living to a senile old age. We don't want to live to an old age where we are no longer capable of taking care of ourselves. You know, that's not something that it is not, you know, I mean, if it happens, it's not necessarily, يعني, you know, a curse for the person or bad for the person it's a trial for those around him but let's be honest here do we want to be in that situation no and our prophet passed away at a beautiful age of 63 an age where he had all of his senses and he's powerful still strong still and yani relatively all the quwa is there so he would seek refuge in allah oh allah i seek refuge in you from living to a senile old age when again you are not no longer coherent you don't want to live that long so number two number three أعوذ بك من فتنة الدنيا All of the trials of the dunya And number four أعوذ بك من عذاب القبر When would our Prophet say this dua? Guys, when would he say this? After every single salah And this hadith is in Bukhari and Muslim And Abu Bakr narrates that And this is in An-Nisa'i That the Prophet would say After every single salah اللهم إني أعوذ بك من الكفر والفقر وعذاب القبر after every salah, oh Allah, I seek refuge in you from kufr and from extreme poverty. I don't want to be extremely poor. And from adhabul qabr. 
Zayd ibn Arqam, narrated in Sahih Muslim, said that I am only teaching you like the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam taught us. Allahumma inni a'udhu bika min al-ajzi wal-kasli wal-jubni wal-bukhli wal-harami wa'adhaab al-qabr. Again, after every salah, adab al-qabr. I seek refuge in you from being lazy and uh, from being incapable and from being cowardly and from being stingy and from living to an old age and from adab al-qabr. Again, Sahih Muslim and Aisha and Sahih Bukhari said, our Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam would always seek refuge in Allah with this dua again after every salah. So we have, I just quoted you five Sahaba, five, and I wanted to do this on purpose to demonstrate five different Sahaba are telling us after every single Salah, our Prophet would seek refuge from Adab al-Qabr. Aisha says that he would say, Allahumma inni a'udhu bika min fitnatin nar, wa min adab nar, wa min fitnat al-Qabr, wa min adab al-Qabr. After every Salah, he would make dua seeking refuge from Adab al-Qabr. Now you tell me, the one who seeks refuge from Adab al-Qabr five times a day for 50 years of his life, Will Allah not accept even one dua once and that's it, gone? Think about that. So, brothers and sisters, from now on, after every salah, add this dua. Add this dua. Allahumma ni'udhu bika. And you can use any of them. Min al-kufri, wal-faqri, wal-ajzi, wal-bakhli, wa min adab al-qabr, wa min fitnat al-qabr. Make it your habit. Don't just rush after salah. Remember, dear brothers and sisters in Islam, of the best times of dua is after salah finishes. Why? Because the lazy people want to rush out and go back. That's when the righteous sit down and they do their adhkar. That's what the angels, when the famous hadith said, what are the angels fighting over? What are the angels fighting? That What is the best deed? Adhkar ba'da salawat. Sitting down after the salawat and just doing your dhikr. When everybody wants to rush away, say the salam and khalas before you know it, half the audience is out. Okay, it's halal, no problem. But this is where the darajat are raised up. This is where the race is won. The salah is over. You don't have to sit. Just sit for a while and do subhanallah, 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 alhamdulillah, alhamdulillah, Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, la ilaha illallah wahdahu la sharika. And then you say these duas. There's multiple duas. Ayat al-Kursi as well. That should also be done. Remember our Prophet ﷺ said, whoever recites Ayat al-Kursi after every single salah, the only thing that is between him and Jannah is his own death. Wallahi, brothers and sisters, 30 seconds. How can you not invest 30 seconds for Jannah? Come on, how lazy can we be? 30 seconds, 40 seconds reciting Ayat al-Kursi after every single salah. The only thing between you and Jannah is your own death. Why can't you do that? Don't be lazy. Aim for Jannah by these small things. So add all of these, make it your habit. This is the difference between the mu'min, the muhsin and the, the average Muslim. This is the difference. This is where it all goes. These small things. I like the statement or the question rather how lazy can we be how lazy can we be just to learn or fail to learn one of the uh, chapters he's spoken about Shra al mark from pronouncing right I'm, i know for certain we've reacted to that and i'm not sure what it said but i'm not going to act clever and pretend like i know what the chapter said it's about going back if you've come across it and actually learning it and knowing that after every salah you remember that um, chapter, then I guess you're safe in the grave. Otherwise, although I was wondering why wouldn't you be safe when your life is no more? Are people trying to make you, like, how can you, how can, I just think, I mean, between this, when we're reacting, sometimes I'm thinking of all these crazy theories. Is it that when the soul is taken away, evil still wants to take you or what? I'm just confused. Otherwise, I thought once you're put down in the ground, buried, that's it. Or maybe it's one of those cases where we've heard where the someone's spirit is not at rest. Anyway. Otherwise, I enjoyed watching this. I learned something new today and I hope you guys did as well. Make sure to give feedback on this video, whatever you understand from this. You can also 
tell us maybe we can understand it better when you guys explain otherwise make sure to give this video a thumbs up share it with your friends and of course don't forget to subscribe and like i said a big shout out to the person that requested this so i'll see you next time